Okay, all praise to the Most High. Tonight's topic is called A Faithless Generation. A Faithless Generation. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Let's start there. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Come on. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So it says faith is a substance of things hoped for. Okay? Meaning faith is the substance of the things that you are hoping for. Okay? The evidence of things not seen. So now the subject matters about faith here. Okay? Watch this. We coming back here. Give me the book of James. Give me James chapter 2. Give me the book of James. James chapter 2. Let's start at verse 17. James 2 verse 17. James chapter 2 verse 17. Mm -hmm. Every good gift and no, every no. gift is from above. No, no. James 2. James chapter 2 verse 17. The book of James chapter 2 verse 17. Come on. Every good gift and every no, no. perfect gift is from what, above. What, what chapter are you reading? You're reading James 3. James chapter 2, verse 17. James. Apologies, sir. James chapter 2, verse, 6, verse 17. Come on. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Read that again. James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So now the Apostle James is teaching us that just you having faith is not enough. You understand? You must have works behind the faith that you profess you have. There must be works behind that. You can't say I have faith, but you're not doing anything to, pro to prove that you have faith. That's why it says the evidence of things not seen. What is the evidence? The evidence is going to be seen in the works that you do. To prove that this brother right here, this sister right here, they have faith. Okay, read verse 17 again. James chapter 2 verse 17. Ray. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So now let's deal with the works that the apostle James is talking about. Give me that in 2nd Esdras. 2nd Esdras chapter 7. 2nd Esdras chapter 7 verse 24. Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 24. Come on. But his law have they despised. So the subject matter is about his law. It says his laws, but his laws have they despised. Talk about us. We despise the laws of the Most High. Right? And denied his covenants. Mm -hmm. In his statutes have they not been faithful. Come on. And have not performed his works. You see that thing? In his statues, have they, have they not been faithful? So guess what? We didn't perform his works. The works that we didn't perform is his laws, statues, and commandments. Because of what? Lack of faith. We didn't have faith. Because Ezra is explaining to us that for you to have faith, you must be doing the works. You must be performing the works. Read that again, verse 24. Because that's what he's saying right here. Read it. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 24. Come on. But his law have they despised mm -hmm. and denied his covenants. In his statutes have they not been faithful. Have they not have been not... what? In his statutes have they not been faithful. He says in his statutes have they not been faithful. So the reason why we denied his, we denied his covenants, the reason why we did not perform his works is because we didn't have faith. That's what he's saying. Okay, come on. And have not performed his works. And have not performed his works. That's the point right there. That's what James is talking about. Go back to James now. Chapter 2, verse 17. James, the 2, verse 17. Come on. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. You see that thing? If it had not works, is dead being alone. So by your faith, we're going to see by your works, we're going to see that you have faith. You are faithful in God's commandments. 
you're, you're observing and applying them to your life, guess what? That's evidence that you have faith. You understand? Come on. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Mm -hmm. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You see that thing? The only way you can show your faith is by your works. That's what the Apostle James is explaining to us. He's not saying anything different from what the Apostle Paul is saying in the book of Hebrews. He's not saying anything different from what Ezra is saying. They are all saying the same thing because they spoke the same things. Give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Watch this. The prophets, they all spoke the same thing. They didn't contradict one another. They complemented each other. Read what you got. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that ye all speak the same thing, mm -hmm. and that there be no divisions among you. You see what he's saying? That you all speak the same things. That's what Ezra said, the same thing that the apostle James is saying. He's saying the same thing that the apostle Paul is saying. Read. And that there be no divisions among you. Mm -hmm. but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You see that thing? They were perfectly joined together. They were one knit. They were, they were, they were knit together as one man. Like you, you read about it in the book of Judges. They were knit together as one man. That's what the Lord wants for us. He wants us to speak the same thing, the same mind, the same judgment. Why? Because we believe in the same things. Okay, precept upon precept. Line upon line, keep the commandments of the Most High so you get the good understanding of what this Bible is saying. That's what the Bible is saying. You understand? So let's go back now. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Come on. Now, faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. You see that the evidence of things not seen. What is the evidence? The evidence is that you keep in the commandments. You are applying what is written in the Bible. You are serving the laws of God. You understand? That's your faith. That's what we read in James 2 verse 18. The apostle Paul is saying the same thing. That evidence is going to be seen by your works that you have faith. Next verse. Come on. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. You see what he's saying? For by it, by faith, the elders obtain the good report because today our forefathers, we're still reading about them because our forefathers had great faith. Read. Through, the, through faith, we understand that the works were framed by the word of no, God. No. That the what? That the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds. The worlds was framed by the word of God. You understand? The worlds during the time of, the world during the time of Aram the world during the time of Noah and the world during the time of today. You understand? We're framed by the word of God. Everything that you see was by the word of the Most High. Go ahead. So that things which were seen were not made of things which do appear. You see that thing? Because we see by the evidence, the things that you see is because the Bible is a true book. The things that we're reading about from the time of Genesis 1 and 1 on up, we can see by the things that appear of the things that were spoken to make things appear. The mountains, the oceans, the animals, the people, the trees, the creeping things, the fowls, you understand, the sun, moon, and stars, and so forth. Okay? We can see by, that's the evidence of the things that the Lord spoke it, it came to pass. You understand? Read that again, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Go ahead. Through faith, we understand that the world's were framed by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now jump down to verse 6 now. Watch this. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, mm -hmm. and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see what he's saying? He says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him so guess what how do we please the lord give me that in sirach 2 okay ecclesiastes you know what give me isaiah 42 verse 21 
let's get to the point. Isaiah 42, 20. This is how we please the. He says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. We understand, he says, you must show your faith by your works. You understand? Now, this is how you please the Lord. Isaiah 42, verse 21. Read that. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Mm -hmm. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. You see how we please the Lord? We please the Lord by his righteousness. His righteousness sake. We must do the Lord's righteousness. That's how we please him. You understand? We love the Lord. We're going to please him by his righteousness. Anything outside of that, you are not pleasing the Lord. Is not about the Father. You understand? It's about Satan. That's what we're reading here. Isaiah is making it plain for us. This is how you please the Lord. Watch this. Give me that in um, 2 Timothy 2. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You see that thing? Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's our motto right there. Go ahead. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, mm -hmm. that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. You see that thing? Our job is to please him who has chosen us to be a soldier. So guess what? In order for us to please him as good soldiers of Jesus Christ, we must be doing his righteousness. That's the only way to please the Lord. Go back to Hebrews now. Chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Come on. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Meaning, without works. Without, because we know what is the faith. The faith is the works. By your works, we can see that you have faith. So by your works, it is, without your works, it is impossible to please the Lord. Impo it's not maybe, if mm -mm, impossible. Meaning you're wasting your time when you don't keep God's commandments. Because the Lord will not hear you in that day. Read. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. You see that thing? He must, and you must he believe. is a rewarder. Hold on. He says you must believe. If you come to the Lord, you must believe that he is. Meaning what? He is the only true God. He is the only true God, the God of Israel. You must believe that thing. You cannot believe there's other gods out there. He is the only one. The living God, the God of Israel. The Almighty. He is the only one. He is. There's no him beside there's, there's no any other God beside him. He's the only one. Okay, read. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see that thing? The Lord will reward you if you seek him. You see, you must seek him diligently. Okay? By keeping his commandments. That's what it means right there. You must keep the commandments. He says, you, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. How do you believe that he is? Give me that in Sirach. You know what? Give me John 7, 38 first. You must believe that he is. Okay? This is how you believe that he, he is. Watch this. John 7, verse 38. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 38. Come on. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So now that's some heavy stuff right there. He that believes on Christ, you believe on, on Christ, you believe in the biblical description of what he looks like. Not only that, it says, as the scripture has said, meaning you believe the things that Christ spoke and taught that he stood for, which is what? The commandments. Okay? He says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Watch this. What did the scripture, what have the scripture said about Christ? He says, you, you must believe that he is. So when you come before him, you must believe on him as the scripture have said. You understand? As it is written. That's what it means when it says, as the scripture have said. Remember it said, I come in the volume of the book. From Genesis to Revelation, 
is as the scripture has said. You see that thing? Sirach 32 now, verse 24. As the scripture has said. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 24. Read. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment. Mm -hmm. And he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worse. So now if you believe in the Lord, you're going to take heed to the commandments. You understand? The commandments, you're going to only going to find the commandments in the law, in the, in, the, in the Bible. And you're going to only know about them if you apply. As long as you don't apply, yeah, you will know of them, but you're not going to know them. Therefore, you're not going to be able to know the Lord. Okay? And therefore, it will be impossible for you to please the Most High. Because why? You are not applying. You can know about them, but as long as you don't apply, it don't mean nothing. It's a waste of time. Okay? Watch this. Go back to Hebrews now. 11 verse 6 once again. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Now jump up to verse 2 now. Watch this. Verse 2. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. He says, by it, by faith, the elders, our forefathers, he says what? They obtained a good report. Let's see one of the elders that obtained a good report because they had great faith. Jump down to verse 7 now. Watch this. Read verse 7. Verse 7. By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, mm -hmm. prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. You see that thing? He became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Because our forefather Noah, he was a man of faith. He had great faith, our forefather. You understand? Read that again, verse 7. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Come on. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, Stop moved right with there. fear. It says, we see what he an being, ark to on. the saving Wait. of his house. Come on. By the witch. We're definitely having some network issues here. Okay. Read verse 7 again. There's a delay. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Yes, sir. Come on. Okay, drop off and come back in. Um, drop off and come back in. Brother Bezalio, pick it up. Uh, I'm on the road, sir. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Brother Jonah, let me hear you. Read what you got. Shalom, can you hear me, sir? Yes, come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 2. For by mm. it, the no, elders... No. You, you, sound, you, sound, you sound a bit far. You sound like you're in a bottle. Yes, sir. Um, I just moved. May I try again? Okay, read that again. Hebrews 11, verse 7. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved right with there. fear. It says, warned of God of things not seen as yet. Things not seen as yet. That's the key we want to focus on. He was warned of God, not, he says, he was warned of God of things not seen as yet. What are those things that was, was not seen as yet? And Noah was moved with fear and he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Watch this. Give me Genesis 6, verse 8. I want to show you Noah's great faith, our forefather. He said, our forefather had great faith. Genesis 
Yes, sir. Come on, Genesis 6, verse 8. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So Noah, forefather, he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Come on. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. That's why Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. Because Noah was a just man and he was perfect in his generation back then. You understand? The, the most High God, out of all the people that he made on this earth, during Noah's time, Noah was the only one that was found worthy. You understand? Read that again, verse 9. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 9. Come on. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect mm -hmm. in his generations. And Noah walked with God. He walked with the Lord. Watch this. He says he was a just man and perfect in his generation. Give me that in Ezekiel 18, verse 5. He says he was a just man and perfect in his generation. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 5. Let's get that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verses 5. Really? But if a man be just and do which is lawful and right. And do that which is lawful and right. So if you are just, you're going to do that which is lawful and right. You see that thing? So Noah was doing that which was lawful and right in the sight of the Most High. Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse, seven, verse 17. Deuteronomy 6, verse 17. Let's, let's understand what it means to do right in the sight of the Lord. We what you got. Deuteronomy 6, verse 17. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 17. Come on. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statues which he had commanded thee. So now the subject matter here is about keeping the commandments of the Most High diligently. Go ahead. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. You see that thing? You see what it means to do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord? You keep the commandments of the Most High diligently. You understand? Go back to where he was at now. Ezekiel 18 verse 5. The book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 5. Come but on. if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. And do that which is lawful and right. So to do that which is lawful, we apply the commandments. Furthermore, you do that which is right. Applying the commandments. See, the Bible is redundant. Noah was doing all of that. Go back to Genesis 6 now. Verse 9. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 9. Mm -hmm. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. It says he was perfect. You see that thing? Not only was he just and right in the sight of the Lord, but he was a perfect man. Watch this. Give me Matthew 5.48. Because this is what Christ commanded us, that we must be perfect, okay? And he told us through the prophets how to be perfect, okay? Matthew 5, verse 48. Read what you got. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 48. Come on. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You see that then the most said God is perfect in heaven. He says we must be perfect just like our Father is perfect. You ever hear the saying in the world, he says, practice makes perfect. But they will be telling you, nobody's perfect. You see, you see the contradiction? They'll be telling you, no, practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. But guess what? They turn around and say, but nobody's perfect. The world is confused, okay? Read that again, verse 48. Read it. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48. Go ahead. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 61. The Lord commanded us to be perfect and he told us how to be perfect. Okay, to reach that level of perfection. This is what every man and woman must do. Watch this. Read it. 1 Kings 8, verse 61. 1 Book of Kings chapter 8, verse 61. Read. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God mm -hmm. to walk in his statutes and keep his commandments as and at this day. 
and to keep his commandment as at this day. You see what it means to be perfect and how to be perfect? You must keep the commandments of the Most High. That's what Noah was doing. You understand? That's why he found grace in the sight of the Lord. He kept the commandments. He was just and he was a perfect man in the sight of God. That's why the Lord used him. Go back to Genesis 6 now, verse 9. The book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. These Please. are the generations of Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah was a just man and a perfect and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Read. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Read. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So now the earth was corrupt. Corrupt because of what? Sin. Read verse 5. Jump up to verse 5. This is why the earth was corrupt during the time of Noah. Read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You see that thing? It was only evil continually, meaning there was no shred of righteousness in the mind of man back then. You understand? It was only evil continually, meaning the evil was multiplying the mind of man. Okay? Now jump down to verse 11. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 11. Mm -hmm. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Read. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Come on. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now the Lord was saying, listen, I'm going to destroy this earth. The people in the earth, I'm going to destroy them because of what? Because of evil, corruption, and violence. What was the evil that was being perpetrated upon the earth? Jump up to verse 2. Watch this. Start of verse 1, actually. Genesis 6, verse 1. Read it. The book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. And it mm -hmm. came to pass. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. So daughters were born unto them. So men began to multiply. Remember, what law was they applying? The law that we, we always read about in Genesis 1, when it says, God, he says what? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. You understand? Come on. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they, look, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So now at this point, you have three categories. You understand? You have the sons of God, the sons of men, and the sons of the wicked. Okay? Read that again, verse 2. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 2. That the mm. sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So the sons of God is talking about the children of Israel. Because before the flood, we were called the sons of God. After the flood, we were called the children of Israel. This is the reason why we went into slavery under the pharaohs for 400 years. Because you'll be asking yourself, why did we end up in slavery and in Egypt? What did we do? We're reading about it right here. Read verse 2 again. The book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 2. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Watch this. Give me Luke 3 verse 37. Let's see who the sons of God are. Okay. The sons of God. Luke chapter 3 verse 37. The book of Luke chapter 3 verses 37. Come on. Which was the son of Methuselah? which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Malaleel, which was the son of Canaan. Come on. Which was the son of Enos, which, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. You see that thing? So the, which was the son of Aram, which was the son of God. So Aram's lineage were called the sons of God. You see that thing? 
Aram's lineage were called the sons of God. Give me Exodus 4, verse 22. Aram's lineage was called the sons of God, which would be us today. Today, after the flood, we are called the children of Israel. Watch this. Exodus 4, verse 22. The book of Exodus, chapter 4, verses 22. Read, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. You see that thing? Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Go back to Genesis 6 now. You know what? Give me Genesis 5, verse 1. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, and in, in the likeness of God made he him. So the generations of Adam, go ahead. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called mm -hmm. their name Adam in the day when they were created. You see what he's saying? It says male and female created he them, and blessed them. And call their name, call their name Adam. In the day when they were created, guess what? All the men back then was called Adam, but there was a main Adam, the Alpha Adam. Okay, Second Ezra three. Give me Second Ezra chapter three. Second Ezra chapter three, verse twenty-one. Watch this. The main Adam, because here it says he called their name Adam. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 21. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome, and so be all they, all they that are born of him. You see what he's saying? He says, The first Adam, the first, the first, the Alpha Adam. That's the one we descend from, the Alpha Adam. Okay? The first Adam. So that first Adam, which was the Son of God, out of that first Adam, the Alpha Adam, come the sons of God. Go back to Genesis 6, verse 2 now. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 2. Read. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And so they the took daughters them wives. of men is talk about the women of the other nations. The daughters of men. Okay. Read. And they took them wives of all which they chose. You see what we did? We started to marry outside of our, our race. That's what we was doing during this time. That's why it says, I have to destroy men that I've made on the earth. You understand? Guess what? What it was back then, so it is today. You understand? Go ahead. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with men. Mm -hmm. For that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. You see that thing? His days shall be 120 years. So this was the sin. We ended up in Egypt as slaves. You understand? Now, Genesis 6, verse 12. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 12. Come on. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Read. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Come on, read. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without the pit, with pitch. You see what he's saying? He says, listen. Make a make make he says what make an ark of gopher wood. You understand? So it must have multiple rooms. As you read down, he's got three stories. That's what that's why today you see these MSC ships, they've got multiple stories and all that. They get it from here. Go ahead. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. The breadth of it, 50 cubits, and the height of it, 30 cubits. Go ahead. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit thou shalt finish it above. 
Read. And the door of the ark shall thou set it. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof with lower, second, third stories thou shalt make it. And third stories thou shalt make it. You are skipping words here. Come on. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 17. And behold, Read. I, even I, to bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. Read verse 17 again. The book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 17. And mm -hmm. behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. So now the Lord is telling Noah, this ark is going to protect from the flood that's coming upon this earth. So therefore, I want you to build an ark. Uh, these are the specifications. Build the ark. Okay, watch this. Go back to Second Peter now. No, no, Hebrews. Not Second Peter yet. I'm jumping ahead. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7. The book of Let's Hebrews. read that again. The book of Come Hebrews, on. chapter 11, verse 7. Mm -hmm. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. You see what he's saying? It says, what being warned of God of things not seen as yet of things not seen as yet what was the things that was not seen as yet go back to genesis 6 verse 17 again so we see we understand the things that was not seen as yet but by faith noah did this thing you understand so he proved his faith by his works he built the ark as he was commanded there's something else that he was commanded to do while he was building the ark watch this read it Genesis 6, verse 17. Come on. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 17. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. So now he says, I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. Why is, why is he saying that? Watch this. Give me Genesis, chapter 2, verse 5. Genesis 2, verse 5. Genesis chapter 2, verse 5. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no, and there was not a man to till the ground. So now you see what he's saying? It says, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God hath not caused it to rain upon the earth. Listen, no, the people never knew anything about rain. From the time of Genesis with Adam, they didn't know anything about rain. You understand? They did not know anything. Of, they've never seen it. You understand? No, they, do they ever, they ever thought about it? Because they, listen, the Mosai never rained. There was never rain on earth. That's why it says of the things not, not yet as seen. Those are the things that rain was never seen. You understand? There was never rain on earth until the time of Noah when it rained 40 days and 40 nights. Watch this. Keep going. Verse 6. But they went up a mist from the earth. From the what? what? From the earth. He says they went up. They went up. Up. So there's a from, there's an upward motion here. They went up a mist from the earth. So the Lord will bring up moisture from the ground itself to do what? Go ahead. And watered the whole face of the ground. You see how the, how, how, how the crops was watered? It was watered by the mist that came up from the ground. It was not from the up from the sky. No, it was from the ground. That's how the, the crops was watered, the veggies and the fruits and all of that. That's how they was watered. Now watch this. Give me, go back to Genesis 6 now. 
verse 17. The book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 17. Read. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth mm -hmm. to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. So now, based on what we read in the book of Hebrews, the faith that Noah had was that there was never seen rain on earth because the mist would come up from the ground and it would water the crops. You understand? So now Noah is commanded to, uh, listen, build an ark. This is the specification. I want you to build the ark because I'm going to destroy the people on this earth with water, with the flood. Noah never seen it before also. He never heard of it. You understand? But he believed it when the Lord said, build the ark to prepare for the flood that's coming. He did it. Jump down to verse, verse 22 now. Genesis 6, verse 22. The book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 22. Thus mm -hmm. did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So Noah, he, he executed the instruction that was given. You understand? You don't see anywhere where Noah is disputing with the Lord yet. He said, oh, but I think, no, you don't see that. You understand? Noah was meek, he was just, he was perfect in the sight of the law. That's why he found grace, because he had great faith. That's what when we read in Hebrews 11 verse 2, it says, guess what? They had good report because of the faith they had. That's why we're reading about that report right now. Genesis chapter 5 verse 32, watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 5 verses 32. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So Noah was 500 years old. You understand? It says he begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Watch this. Genesis 7 verse 1 now. The book of Genesis chapter 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. You see that thing? He's repeating the same thing we read in Genesis 6 verse 9. Now jump down to verse 5. The book of Genesis chapter 7 verse 5. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. So you see that thing? He executed the instruction. He was obedient. He was a meek man. Go ahead. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Read verse 6 again. The book of Genesis chapter 7 verse 6. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. So Noah was 600 years old when the flood came. 600. So now from 500 years old that we're reading in Genesis 5, now 100 years has gone by. Now the flood comes after 100 years. You understand? Read on. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark. Because of the waters of the flood. Because of the waters of the flood. Now watch this. Now you think about it and say, hmm, our forefather Noah, he built during, the, during those 100 years before the flood came from 500 years old. Guess what Noah was doing for those 100 years? Noah was building the ark. You understand? As he was building the ark, guess what Noah did? Watch this. This is what the Lord also commanded Noah. Give me that in Second Peter now. Second Peter chapter two verse five. Second Peter. This is what Noah was doing. Okay. Come on. Second book of Peter, chapter two, verse five. Mm -hmm. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. You see what the, the Lord brought up, he brought the flood upon the world of the ungodly because they didn't keep the commandments. But the key he says, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. That's what Noah was. Noah was a preacher. What was Noah preaching? Because remember, what does the word preach mean? It means you foretell. You teach before it happens. Preach. Pre-teach. You prophesy. Noah was prophesying. Listen. The flood is going to come upon this earth. You guess what you must do? You must keep the commandments because he was a preacher of righteousness. He was teaching the people the laws of God. 
That's what Noah was doing during his time. As he was building the ark, he was, he was waking the people as well, teaching the people to repent for a hundred years. The people didn't believe it. You understand? They did not believe it. That's some heavy stuff right there. Noah, 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 he never saw rain before. Think about it. He never saw rain before. You understand? Now he's being commanded, build an ark. The flood is coming. And you must teach the people to repent. That's what he was doing. So he had great faith. He went out there to teach the people, the, the flood is going to come on this earth. You understand? You better repent. So he had great faith. He never saw rain, but also he was building the ark for something that he never seen before. Not only that, he went to the streets and taught the people. Heavy stuff. You have to have a great faith to do stuff like that. Noah was not a regular man. He was not a regular man. Don't do this. Regular men don't do this stuff. Read that again, verse 5. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So Noah was building, you understand? No, he was physically building the ark and building the people, and the people refused to do it. The people refused to receive the instructions. You understand? Guess what we are doing to do? We are doing the same thing. Here we are, we're building ourselves up. You understand? So we can get right. We go to the streets, we wake our people to build them up. And what are we teaching? We're teaching them Christ is coming to, is coming to destroy, is coming to judge the earth. Death and destruction is coming on this earth. You don't want to be on the right side of this thing when the Lord returns. Our people don't believe it. Our people are too involved in their lust in the world. They don't give a damn. They are too busy on Instagram and Facebook. They don't care about what the prophets are bringing up. They are still in La La Land. That's the same thing that was happening during the time of Noah. The people had no faith. That's why if you, look, if you read Luke 18, Christ was asking the question, when the Son of Man returns, when he comes, will he find faith on the earth? Read that in Luke 8, Luke 18. Because Christ asked the same question. Because our people today, they be claiming, no, we can't wait for Christ to come. They be lying. Watch this. Luke chapter 18 and verse... 6 Luke 18 verse 6 watch this you know what read verse 8 let's get get to the point Luke 18 verse 8 the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 8 come on I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth you see what he's asking he says however when the son of man cometh is he going to find faith on the earth is he going to find men with faith Women with faith on this earth, keeping the commandments. So he's asking a rhetorical question because guess what? In the last days, there, there's going to be what? People will not want to do what this Bible says. That's what he's saying. The majority of the people, they are not going to want to do it. Okay? So he's saying, I'm not going to find faith on the earth when I return. That's what he's saying right there. It's only the remnant that will believe what is written and they will actually do what is written. That's what he's saying right there, okay? Because guess what? What was going on back then during the time of Noah is the same thing that is going on today. Our people don't believe what is written and the people in the truth, they still don't believe it. Don't get it twisted, okay? Now, go back to Genesis now. Genesis chapter seven, verse six again. The book of Genesis, chapter 7, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Jump down to verse 11 now. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. You see that thing? The windows of heaven was opened. The Lord said, okay, it's time for me to bring rain now on this earth. Let me bring the rain now because Noah has done what he was supposed to. The ark is built. All the animals that were needed to be taken into the ark, they are all complete. The number is complete now. Now everybody's sealed. It's time to destroy everyone now. Go ahead. 
and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. You see that thing? The rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40, to make sure that everything is done, everything is dead. Don't nobody can escape. You say, no, there's a tall tree. I can, mm -mm. He says, you could not see the mountains. You understand? The flood, it was so, listen, it was so horrific that everything, the Lord made sure that everything died. Okay, come on. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with him into the ark. Jump down to verse 17. The book of Genesis chapter 7 verse 17. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth and the water increased and bare up the ark and it was lift up above the earth. You see that thing? So the, the ark was lifted up above the earth. Why? Because of the water, because of the flood that came down. Okay, come on. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters. So it was floating upon the face of the waters. Read on. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Read. 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. You see that thing? The mountains was covered. There was no trees that was taller than mountains. The, the, the mountains were taller than trees. So now the mountains are covered. So the trees is a, listen, that's a done deal already. Go ahead. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl read, and of cattle. Read that. And oh, of, wait, wait. Read that again. The book of Genesis chapter 7, verses 21. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. You see what the Lord did? He made sure that the, 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 the animals that he created upon this, the creeping things, the fowls and all of that, guess what? They all died, including the people. Because the people did not want to repent. You understand? They didn't want to repent. So the Lord said, oh, no, kill them all. The only people that are found worthy is Noah and his family. That's it. And the animals that are going to go up into the ark. The rest of everything else got to go. You understand? That's the God of the Bible. Okay? Watch this. Give me, because when you think about it, there was building the ark. He was teaching you understand? He was doing both at the same time. He would go and teach. And then when he comes back, he's dealing with his family. After that, he's going to the ark. He's building it. 100 years he was doing this thing. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's great faith. Our forefather Noah, he had great faith. So when we look at this thing, give me that in Romans 15 verse 4. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, must have hope. Might have hope. You see that? So the things that were written aforetime were written for us to learn from. That's what we're reading now. We're reading the book of Genesis about our forefather Noah and his great, the great faith that he had. Guess what? We must investigate how did Noah manage to do all of this? Because Noah had great, he believed, when the, he believed in the Most High 100%. He wasn't double-minded. He wasn't wavering. He was all in. That was his mindset. You understand? He was not double-minded when it came to the what? To please in the Most High. So that's the type of spirit we must move in. Both men and women, we must move in that spirit. You must be steadfast in your understanding don't move to the left or to the right. You understand? Stay firm in your understanding. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of, give me Second Kings. You know what? Before you get me that, okay? Give me the book of Numbers 14 verse 1. Now we're going to fast forward to the future now. Let's see the generations that come after Noah. You understand? Numbers 14 verse 1.
the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 1. And all the and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept to that night. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hmm. No, no. Give me Exodus 14. Yes, that's what I want. Exodus 14, not numbers. Exodus 14, verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihahiroth. The book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihahiroth, between Migdol and the sea, over against Peyal Zephon, before it, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. So now, remember now, now guess what? We are, we, 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 this, this is what Mo Moses, what he's going to do, he's going to part the Red Sea. Okay, let me put it like that, keep it simple. Moses is going to part the Red Sea. So now we are journeying now, okay? Watch this, go ahead. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut them in. Mm -hmm. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after, him, after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. So now, Pharaoh's mindset is that, listen, they are trapped in the wilderness. Now it's time for us to go there and destroy them. That's Pharaoh's mindset, okay? Before parting the Red Sea. Go ahead. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people, and they said, why have we... Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? You see that thing? That's the same mindset that the pharaohs had back then is the same mindset that the white man has today. You understand? They, stay, they have the same mindset because Israel just stole all the cultures of before him and is implementing them in this kingdom. You understand? So now they realize that why did we let these people go from serving us? We need slaves. That was their mindset. Go ahead. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the, after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. Because the Lord was with us. You understand? So he pursued after us. Watch this. Go ahead. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Piha Hiroth before Beal Zephon. So now what we are seeing here is that they want to entrap us between what? In the in as we left Egypt, okay, now they say, remember what Pharaoh said, said they are encamped, they are entrapped in the wilderness. So they are thinking before they cross the Red Sea, we're going to, we're going to what? We're going to trap them there. That's where we're going to destroy them, the men, women, and children. That was the mindset. You understand? Come on. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. You see, I think we remember the Lord on this day. We cried unto the Lord because they were tailing us. You understand? They were behind us, chasing after us. Right? And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore, hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Remember, they just saw the miracles, okay? I want to show you the look at the mindset between Noah's Noah and this wicked generation right here. They just saw the great miracle that the Lord did in Egypt, the plagues. They're just coming from seeing the plagues. You understand? They got delivered from Pharaoh. Physically, they are out of Pharaoh's domain now. Now they are in the wilderness. 
You understand? Before having crossed the Red Sea, they are already blaming Moses for this. You understand? Because now the pressure is on. They are scared. You understand? Right? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. So now the mindset, what is the mindset? The mindset here is that they are realizing that is gonna, we're going to require, we're going to be required to be responsible now, that now we are no longer dependent on Esau's breast milk. On Pharaoh's breast milk, excuse me. So now they are realizing, you know what? We don't want to actually do things for ourselves. We would rather have master be doing it and us being slaves. Because it requires responsibility for you to stand on your feet. You see that thing? Read. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye, for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. You see that thing? Listen, I'm waiting for that day when it comes to this wicked kingdom that's over us. Okay. So now he's saying, for the Egyptians whom ye see today, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. You see that thing? That's the same thing today. But my point is this. They were already starting to blame Moses when things didn't go the way they wanted. Read. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But read, lift read, thou... Read verse, hold on, read verse 15 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. So now, remember, Moses went to cry to the Lord now about, about this. Because the children of Israel, we was nagging Moses. So now Moses goes to the Mosai. Mo, the Mosai said, listen, man up. That's what the Lord is telling Moses. You know, tell them to go forward. Why are you coming to me for? Tell them to move forward. Okay, come on. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. You see what he's saying? Now he's, gonna, he's commanding Moses, listen, you are going to part the Red Sea, they're going to pass through. Because remember what Pharaoh said, because remember what we read in Numbers 14. Okay, I mean, Exodus 14, when it says, he says, I will be honored upon Pharaoh in uh, Exodus 14 verse 4. The Lord said, I'm going to do this thing. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to be honored among Pharaoh because the Pharaoh is going to see what I'm going to do for my people against Pharaoh. Okay, go ahead. And I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians that they shall follow them. And I'll get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. Read on. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Mm -hmm. Read. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind him. Stop and right the pillar. There. Hold on. Read that again. Read that again. The book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. Read. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their faces and stood behind them. So now the angel of the Lord is going behind us and the chariot also, the pillar, is also going behind us now. Remember, the Egyptians are chasing us. Now the angel of the Lord goes behind us you understand? And the chariot is moving behind us now. Give me Exodus 13, verse 21 and 22. The book of Exodus, chapter 13, verses 21. And the Lord went before them 
by day in a pillar of a cloud mm -hmm. to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Read. He took not away the pillar of, of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. You see what the Lord did. So it was back then. So it is, you just can't see the pillar of cloud. You just can't see it. But the Lord is right there. You understand? So what we're reading in Numbers, in Exodus 14, the angel of the Lord went behind us and the chariot that was over at by day as a cloud and a pillar of fire by night went behind us. And as that was happening, we saw all of that, by the way. We saw everything that was going down. Okay? Go back to Exodus 14. Exodus 14 and verse 20. The book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 20. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, mm -hmm. so that the one came not near the other all the night. You see that thing? So the Lord now said, okay, I'm going to get between you and the Egyptians that are chasing you. See, let me show you what I'm going to do. Remember, Moses already been commanded, part the sea. You are going to part the sea. And when you do, the children of Israel will pass through it on dry land. Go ahead. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night mm. and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. You see, the East Afro fathers, they saw this thing. They saw the Red Sea being parted, you understand? And you see a wall on the left of water just standing there with the fishes, the creeping things. And on the right, you see the same thing. The water standing like a pillar, like a wall, and you passing in the middle of it on dry land. That's some heavy stuff. Who does that? The God of Israel does that thing. And our forefathers and foremothers, they saw all of that. Okay, come on. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. So now he's taking his, all his host. You understand? It says his horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Read. And it came to pass that in the morning, and it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Read that again. The book of Genesis, the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 24. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and mm -hmm. troubled the host of the Egyptians. So the Lord was troubling the army of the Egyptians. You understand? Read on. And took off the chariot wheels mm. and they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, from the Lord. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. You see that thing? The, the nations knew. For the Egyptians knew that the Lord of the, their God is fighting for them. That's why what is happening to, to us is happening to us because their God is defending them. He is fighting for them. That's the same thing that we always read about in the book of Judith, where that Ammonite, that Ammonite king is, fight, is figuring out what makes us tick. You understand? And there was a responded to them and said, listen, if they are not keeping the commandments, the Lord is not with them. But when they are keeping the commandments, you better stay away from them because their God will defend them. That's what the Egyptians are realizing here. Okay, keep going. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea that mm -hmm. the waters may want, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians upon the chariots, and upon the horsemen. So now the Lord says, drown them. Once they are in the middle of the sea, once my children have passed over, drown them all. Go ahead. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and turned, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. Mm. And the Egyptians fled against it, 
and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Go ahead. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them and remained not so much as one of them. Read, meaning the Lord was killing, he killed them all. Go ahead. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on, the, on their left. So you have to picture this thing. Here we are, we are our forefathers and foremothers, they are crossing the Red Sea. On the left hand is a wall of water, terrible to look upon. On the right hand is a wall of water, you understand? And you are walking on dry land between the sea. Who does that? You see, that's why when they, they should be showing all these religious uh, Christianity movies, they'll never get it to this level. Never. Because now the white man has to acknowledge that there's only one true God on this earth, and that's the God of Israel. But because he's got too much pride, he's acknowledging himself that, no, there's nobody else but me. I'll prove what I'm saying. Hold this. Give me the book of Isaiah 47. Okay. Isaiah 47, because that's the, that's, the, that's the mindset he has. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 47 and verse... Read verse 6. We're going to start there. The book of Isaiah, chapter 47, verse 6. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient has thou, has thou very heavily laid thy yoke. So now he's talking, this is talking about America here. Because verse 1 is talking about Babylon, which is Babylon the Great, the United States of America. He's talking about America here. So it says, uh, it says, I was wroth with my people. Because when the Lord was wroth with us, we went into slavery, colonization, and so forth. That was the, 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 the wrath of the Lord that was upon us that you read about in Isaiah 51, verse 20 down. Okay, read verse 7. And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever. You see so that, that thing? Thou... This is what America says. He says, I'm going to be a lady forever. That's why you see the Statue of Liberty. That's the lady. Go ahead. Represents the lady represents America, the great hall. Read. So that thou did not lay these things to thy heart, mm -hmm. neither did remember the latter end of it. You, you see that thing? No, don't, don't even take it into account, the latter end of, of, of their kingdom. Because one minute they believe, they claim they believe this, but the next minute they, they what? They go against it. Go ahead. Therefore, hear now this. Thou that art given to pleasures. America is given to pleasures. That's why you can be gay, you can be lesbian, you can change your gender, you can be gender neutral and so forth. Guess what? They are given to pleasures. Pleasures that are against the laws of God. Read. That dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am mm -hmm. and none else beside me. You see that thing? I am and none else beside me. This is what America says. When you read the scriptures, that's what the Lord says. But this is what America tells themselves. You understand? Read that verse again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 47, verse 8. Therefore, hear now this. Thou art given to pleasures that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. So now he's saying, America is going against everything that's written. You understand? It says, thou art given to pleasures, America, that dwellest carelessly. Why? Because they've got nuclear bombs. They've got nuclear missiles. That's why they are dwelling carelessly, because in their minds, nobody can touch them. Go ahead. That says on, in thine heart. Read verse 8 again. I, the book I says, chapter 47, verse 8. Therefore, hear now this. Thou art given to pleasures that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Jump down to verse 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. You see that thing? America trusts in their witchcraft. That's what they trust upon. 
America, they trust in their witchcraft. Christianity is one of the tools of witchcraft. Why Jesus? One of the tools of witchcraft. Politics, the tool of witchcraft. Go ahead. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it had, per it had perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. You see that thing? So he does not acknowledge the more. That's why you hear about this evolution garbage. You understand? Because Esau will not acknowledge the most high. That's why he got to go. Okay? So let's go back to Exodus now. 14. Exodus chapter 14 and verse, verse 27. The book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 27. And Wait. Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. Mm -hmm. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. They remained not so much as one of them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on the left. You see that thing? So our forefathers, they saw all of this. They saw Moses part the Red Sea. They saw, I want to show you the start different. They start difference in our forefathers during the time when we was in the wilderness and our forefather Noah. You understand? Noah was a just man. He was perfect. He kept the commandments. And Noah had great faith, our forefather Noah. He had great faith. Not the Negro today. No. And the Negro today is, is the same as the Negro during the time when we left Egypt. The same Negro. Okay? Watch this. Um, keep going. Go ahead. Thus, the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and mm -hmm. Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. You see that thing? So uh, we saw all of this, the Lord is saying. Go ahead. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Read that again, verse, uh, verse 31. Read verse 31 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 31. And Israel mm -hmm. saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. So the people feared the Lord. They believed the most like God. You understand? They believe him. They believe the Lord and they believe the prophet that the Lord sent because of the, the miracles that they saw. You understand? They believe, they feared. They, at this point, after they saw this, it seems that as though they had faith. But no, they did not. Watch this. Exodus 24 verse 10. Now let's fast forward a little bit. Watch this. Because I'm trying to show you. Remember what, remember what the scriptures say about us, the nation of Israel. It says we're a children, we have no faith. Because we don't want to keep the commandments because that's what it proves. That's It proves that whether you have faith or not, are you keeping the commandments? Okay, Exodus 24 verse 10. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 24 verse 10. Read. And they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire. A paved work of sapphire stone. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. So now sapphire is the, is the hottest part of the flame. You understand? Sapphire is green, okay? It's green. It's the hottest part of the flame. So it says, this is what they saw. What did our forefathers see? They saw the chariot on Mount Zion. That's what they saw. That's why it says they saw the God of Israel because they saw the chariot. That's what it's going into. You understand? Watch this. Keep going. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. You see that then they were rejoicing. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mountain, be there. And I'll give thee 
tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. So now the Lord is saying, listen, you see what he's saying? He says, come up, to, he says, come up unto the mount and be there and I will give thee the tables of stone and a law. So now the Lord is calling Moses to Mount Zion. You understand? Our forefathers, as Moses is going into the chariot, they can see everything going on. They see Moses going into the chariot on Mount Zion, and they are seeing Mount Zion on fire. Hmm. Heavy stuff. With the chariot on Mount Zion. They are seeing all of this, by the way. It's meaning what? It's in the line of sight. It's not because when Moses went to the mount, they couldn't see him no more. Mm -mm. They were looking right at him and they saw Mount Zion on fire. They saw the chariot of the Lord. Go ahead. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said Wait, unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. And if any have any matters to do, and him once, let him come unto them. So now that you see that because remember, if you read up, it was Aaron, Nadab, and Nadab. You understand? Aaron and Nadab. Let me see. Let me see. Mm. Yeah, you see, verse 9. It says, There went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abahu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. You see that? So now, as Moses went up over there, because remember, the leaders were, could see, the leaders were in front of the people, but they saw Moses go up there to get, the, to get the tables. You understand? Keep going. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and, and the cloud covered it six days, and the seventh, and... The seventh day, he called Moses out of the midst of the cloud. He called unto Moses out of the midst of a cloud. This is the seventh day, that's the Sabbath. Go ahead. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain, on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. You see that part right there? He says, in the eyes of the children of Israel. They saw all of this stuff go down. Go ahead. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and get him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Remember in verse 17, it says, um, it says, was like the, it says, what was like the devouring fire on the top of the mountain, in the top of the mount, in the eyes of the children of Israel. We saw all of this. Now, I'm bringing this up because when we go to camp, right, you can tell that you can go out, the, you can go, you can pull out the scriptures. Christ is a black man. The Israelites are black. God is black. We need to repent, keep God's commandment and rule the earth. You can go over all of that, right? After you do, then you read the law. Now you see the demon jump out. You see that? So, What's the difference between what we are seeing today and what happened back then? There's no difference, the same thing. They saw M Mount Zion on fire, blazing. Moses went, went into the chariot and so forth, and they could they be looking at it. Moses came back because we're going to read about it when Moses returns. You understand what they was doing? My point is this. Now, fast forward it to today. You can show them all the color scriptures in the Bible and all of that, the history and all of that. But as soon as the law comes out, yeah, that's your interpretation. You understand? They're going to give you all type of excuse. It's the same spirits. They are all back. Faithless, they have no faith. It doesn't matter even if they see it, they still don't believe it. You understand? Watch this. Give me Exodus 32 verse 15 now. Okay, Exodus 32, verse 15. Uh, Brother Haggai, let me hear your sound. Just give me one. I just, I just want to test something real quick. Exodus 
Exodus chapter 32, verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of, tables of testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other they, were they written. Read verse 15 again. Come on. Verse 15 once again. Exodus chapter 32 verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tables of, te of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. Okay, all praises. Now the sound is back. Brother Jonah, we appreciate you. Keep going. Verse 16 now, come on. Come on. Verse 16. And the tables were the work of God. And the, writing, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. So now Moses is coming back from the mount. Remember, they are looking at Mount Zion on fire. Moses went into the mount, right? They are seeing all of this going on. Now Moses is coming back with the tables of stone, the Ten Commandments. Go ahead. Come on, what's going on with the sound? So I'm having network issues, so I can't hear nothing. Mm. Okay, Brother Jonah, let's pick it up. Yes, sir. The book of Exodus, chapter 32, verse 16. Read. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God. Graven upon the tables. Okay, read verse 16 once again. The book of Exodus chapter 32 verse 16. And the tables were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God. Graven so now, upon the hold, tables. So now Moses, Moses got all the, he's got the tables now. You understand? He's got the laws, the statutes and the commandments to come and teach the children of Israel. Watch this. Go ahead. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. Mm. And he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. Okay, read verse 18 again. So he, he's not asking the question. He is, he's making a statement here. So read that again, read it right. The book of Exodus chapter 32 verse 18. He said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither it is the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. So now, because you see in verse 17, Joshua, in his mind, he says, there is a noise of war in the camp. So Joshua is saying, I'm hearing the, the noise of war, meaning for what? I'm hearing the noise of war because they're getting excited and all of that. Because they what? Because of being overcome, what they saw in what they saw, what the Lord did to the Egyptians and all of that. That's the mindset, okay? That's what he's thinking. But watch verse 18. Read verse 18 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 32, verse 18. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery. Neither is it is the saying? voice. Now, this hold on. This is Moses speaking now. Is it no 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 no? It's not because they are they are shouting for mastery, because they are excited about the scripts. They are excited about um, the laws and the statutes and the commandments. That's not the reason why they are excited. That's not the reason why there's noise. Go ahead. Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. You see that he says the excitement is not because they have overcome. They are overcoming their sins and all of. Mm -mm, that's not the reason. Read. But the noise of them that sing do I hear? He says, but the noise of them that sing do I? They are singing. Meaning what? The roof is on fire. That's what's going on here. They are partying. Okay, go ahead. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tables out of his hand and break them beneath the mount. 
You see what Moses did? When he came, he said, listen, he says, he saw the calf. Okay. He says, and the dancing. He says, Moses' anger works hot. So you can imagine the type of dances they was doing. These people was partying, they was drinking, and there was, there was what? There was worshiping this calf. That's what was going on during this time. Idolatry. That is what was going on here. So to translate it to today, because our people, they are slow. So to translate it to today is all the clubs, the busy corners and so forth, the room, whatever, in Fenton, all these different places where our people go to party and all of that. Yes, because they go there dressed promiscuously. They do these sexual dances and all of that. Yes, worshiping of idols. Which idol? The goddess of fertility, Diana, Isis, Semiramis. Okay, read. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strode, and strode it upon the water and made the children of Israel to drink it. You see what he did? He, listen, remember, he was over there. He, he, remember, Moses, when he went over there to collect, to collect the, the stones and all of that, remember, he was fasting. Moses was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. You understand? So as Moses fasting 40 days and for, to receive the instructions, right, the tables, and the other books that, were, that he was writing, now... He took the tables of stone that was written with the finger of the Lord and he had to, he broke them. He, he decided to what? To grind them to powder and he made them drink it. That's how mad he was. He was mad as hell. You see, because our people is crazy. Our people is crazy. You got to have a backbone to deal with Israel. You understand? Go ahead. And Moses said unto Aaron, what did this people what did this people unto thee that thou has brought so great a sin upon them? Because of what? Worshipping idols. Go ahead. Because they, they made a calf. They made a golden calf. Read on. And Aaron said, let not the anger of my Lord waste heart. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. He says, you know, you know how Israel is. That's what now that this brother is telling him, listen. You know how these people are? They are rebellious as hell. That's what he's telling Moses. But he was left in charge to what? To look after the people while he was gone to the mount. Read. For they said unto me, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as this was, for as, for as for Moses. No, no, the book no. Of Exodus, read, read, read verse 23 again. The book of Exodus chapter 32, verse 23. For they said unto me, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. Because guess what? They don't recognize his more. They, they don't recognize Moses anymore. They don't recognize him. That's why it says, as for this Moses right here, we don't know what has become of him. That's the same thing today. Watch this. Give me first Samuel 10, verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 10. So the same thing that they are saying to Moses, because this is what the Lord said to Saul. Watch this. 1 Samuel 10 verse 6. Effectively, he's saying the same thing to us today. Okay, read what you got. First book of Samuel chapter 10 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with thee, and shalt be turned into another man. You see what he's saying? And shall be turned into another man. Somebody completely different. You understand? The Lord says you are going to be born again. That's what he's telling Saul right here. Your spirit is going to be changed. The Lord will send the spirit of old. You understand? So now, what they are saying to Moses says, listen, we don't know what has become of him. What are they saying? We don't recognize Moses anymore. That's the same thing today. As you are going through the journey of repentance, Guess what? The people that used to know you in a certain way, when you start to change, that's how they're going to turn on you. Okay? And they're not going to say, we don't know what has become of you. They're not going to exactly phrase it like this. They're going to say, mm, he thinks he's better now. She thinks he's all that. She thinks, because what? Guess what? The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. You understand? 
The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them with their words and all of that. But what we're reading here, that's exactly what they were saying to Moses. Okay, we don't know what has become of him. Go back to Exodus 32, verse 24. The book of Exodus, chapter 32, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me. Then I cast it into the fire, and they came out as calf. You see, it's like it's a, it, the way Aaron is saying it is like magic just happened. These people forced me. You understand? They gave him the earrings, the golden earrings, and all of that, and he fashioned the golden calf. So it's as though they gave him the gold and all of that. He threw the gold in the wall, in the fire, and then boom, shazam, the golden calf was standing, right? No, he fashioned it. He was the devil too. Go ahead. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among the enemies. You see what he did? Because he caused them to sin. He caused the people to sin because he caused them to worship the golden calf, an idol. You understand? Read. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Read. And he said unto them, and he said unto them Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his come and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. So now he's saying, line them up, those that don't believe, because he said, who's on the Lord's side? You understand? Gather, gather yourselves unto me. The rest that did not, he said, okay, put them to death. Go ahead. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And they fell off the people that day about 3,000 men. You see how many men died on this day? 3,000. 3,000 men was put to death on this day. Why? Because they decided what? They had no faith. That was the problem. It's not like Moses when he disappeared. They didn't see Mount Zion anymore. It's not like that was what was going on. No. They was looking right at it. They could see Mount Zion with their eyes. They saw the chariot sitting on top of Mount Zion on fire. They saw all of that. But in their mind, they say, okay, as for this Moses, we don't know what has become of him. So they grew impatient because they had no faith while they were looking right at it. You can't make this stuff up. That's the chief, that's the Jew, that's Judah for you. That's Israel for you. Okay. You can bring all manner of evidence. That it doesn't matter how many evidence. Listen. After that, you're going to ask the brother, what's your nationality? I'm me. You're like, what the hell? Okay. He's going to tell you something. Listen, they don't hear nothing you say. There are those that come to camp and say, okay, this brother is sincere. This sister is sincere. You understand? They really truly want to know. But the rest, the majority, they don't want to hear nothing. You understand? It's only good. When you go over, you know what I noticed? Even when we was in Soweto, when we was teaching, it was good when we were teaching about you're going to receive the kingdom and all of that. The minute we started to deal with the laws, the people started to live one by one. Yep. They started to live one by one. All of a sudden, you just see a whole crowd just disappear. Only a few brothers and sisters, they'll still be standing. You see that? Because when it comes to law and order, nation building, the tools that are required that it need, is needed to build the nation, guess what happens? Our people don't want to hear that. Because there was a, there's a sister, she responded on some tweet, okay, on Twitter. Because what did I say? I said something and, whoo, hey, she was, the sister was mad, yeah. Let me see what I said. Um, and a brother also, okay? Because, you know, these effeminate black men make me sick. The simps. The simps are the first ones always want to say something. Let me see, because I did say something here. 
there's this simp that he got cut so much that he can't help him. So he keep coming back. Okay. Let me see what the sister said. The sister, he, she responded to one of the, the tweets that was sent out. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Okay. Mm. Because I definitely said something to upset the sister. Oh, yes. I said, is hashtag black women be feminine? I said, no to masculine black women who dress, speak, and who dress, speak, and dress like their fathers. Okay. Then I quoted Deuteronomy 28, verse 56, when it says, the tender and delicate women among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. You see, this is a feminine sister right here, right? Let's see what the black ashy woman said. Uh, I don't think I'm going to find it now. Ah. Okay. I really have to find that tweet. I, if you brothers can find it, just, you know, let me know if you can find it. Okay, brother Hegai sent it. Let me see. No, 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 not this one. This black ashy Negro right here. This emotional Negro. No, no, not this emotional Negro. There's another one. This is a, this is a, this is a, this is a brother right here. This one. Okay, but he's a woman, so we can just, we can roll with it. Um... I wanted the one for the sister. There's a one, there's a one that the sister, she said something. Okay. If you can find it, just you know, send it to me. All right. If you can find that tweet, send it to me so we can read it. But the point I wanted to show you is that when you look at what was going on back then with our forefather Noah, Noah son found grace in the sight of the Lord. You understand? Noah had great faith. For hundred years, Noah was teaching, building the ark. You understand? And he believed what the Lord said by his acts. But when you look at us now in the wilderness, what our forefathers was doing, they did not believe nothing the Lord was saying. Even seeing everything that they saw, Noah didn't see rain. He never saw it before, but he still built the ark. For 100 years he was doing that. He was teaching for 100 years because he believed what the Lord said. Our forefathers in the wilderness and former, they saw everything, yet they did not believe. You see that? Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 11, verse 1. 2 Chronicles, chapter 11, and verse 1. 2 Book of Chronicles, chapter 11, verse 1. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin, and 104 score thousand chosen men, which were warriors to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. So now this is during the, this is after Solomon had died at this point. Okay. Looks like Brother Haggai found the tweet. Let's see. Yes. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. The sister, there's a divested, de, divested gang. That's the name of the sister now. I said, no to masculine black women who dress, speak, and dress like their fathers. Deuteronomy 28, verse 56. Listen to what she says. It says, black men don't even go to church or pray over their food, yet want to bring up the Bible to manipulate black women into engaging in behavior that black men want us to engage in. Hold on. Because, and the sister, look, she's wearing like a horse and minx hair and all that, okay? She completely, she did not even touch the topic. 
she just deflection yeah we went over at last about this the art of deception deflection that's what the sister did then i responded to this black ashy demon i said accountability is poison to the black women today they don't want to be told about themselves i said masculine women must fall weaves must fall <laughs> that's what i said to the sister i said natural hair is royal hair just like god and christ has christ is a black man with woolly hair read revelation 1 14 and 15. that's what i said to the sister okay but guess what she didn't come back she was shut down i was on fire last yesterday yeah i was getting on these people here yeah. okay it's good yeah to just set some fire on twitter with the word of the most high the word is going out okay there are those that are hacking in they are responding there are those that are responding they are mad as hell okay second chronicles 11 verse 1 read what you got second book of chronicles chapter 11 verse 1 and when mm -hmm. Rehoboam has come to jerusalem he gathered off the house of judah and benjamin and 104 score thousand chosen men which were warriors to fight against israel that he might bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. so now Rehoboam wanted to go and fight jeroboam to bring all 12 under him but that was not going to happen because it was going to go against the prophecy. Go ahead. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Read. Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, saying, mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren. Return every man to his house, for this thing is done of me. And you they obeyed. For this thing is done of many. This thing is from the Lord. Read on. And they obeyed the words of the Lord and returned from going against Jeroboam. Read. And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judah. So now, watch this. Now we want to find out what Jeroboam did because Rehoboam was not allowed to go and fight against Jeroboam. Now jump down to verse 13. The book, second book of Chronicles, chapter 11, verse 13. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of all the coasts. Mm -hmm. For the Come Levites on. left their suburbs and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. So you see what Jeroboam did? Jeroboam fired the Levites. Jeroboam fired the priests. You understand? And the reason why he did it, we're going to read about why he did that thing. But there's something I want out of this. Go ahead. And he ordained him, and he ordained him priests for high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. So now, what did Jeroboam do? Jeroboam, he created two golden calves. Remember what our forefathers did? When Moses went to the mount, they built a calf. They created a calf out of their earrings and their necklaces and all of that. Guess what? Jeroboam, he built two of them. He, he, he fired the priests, the Levites, because the Levites don't sacrifice to no idols. They sacrifice in the temple and so forth. But he fired the priests and set bums up in there to be the priests now, which were not even the sons of Aaron. You understand? To sacrifice unto these calves which he made. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Kings, chapter 12, verse 25. 1 Kings 12, verse 25. Let's get some more details here. First book of Kings, chapter 12, verses 25. Mm -hmm. Then Jeroboam built Sechem in Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Penuel. So now Jeroboam is also building his own cities as well. Okay, come on. And Jeroboam said in his heart, now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. So now he's thinking, and this is what he's thinking in his mind now. He says, you know what? The, the ten, these 10 tribes are going to go back and be under Judah in the house of David in southern kingdom. That's what he's thinking right now. Go ahead. If this people 
go to do sacrifice no, in the no. house. Hold on. If these people go up, okay, read that right. Come on. The book, first book of Kings, chapter 12, verse 27. If these people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto the Lord. So he don't want that. He doesn't want the people to turn to the Lord. You see, Israel is wicked as hell. Go ahead. Even unto Roboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Roboam, king of Judah. So now he's thinking, listen, I don't want these people to go to Jerusalem to worship. So I'm going to devise a cunning plan for them not to go up to Jerusalem to worship. Let's see what Jeroboam did. Go ahead. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. You see that thing? He made two of them. Our forefathers, during the time when he was with Moses, he, they made one. He decided, no, no, I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to make two of them. Go ahead. And said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. You can't make this stuff up, man. Listen, you can't, listen. He's telling them after he made two golden calves, Listen to what he's telling them. He says, listen, it's too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. No, no, Jerusalem is too far. You don't got to go there. I've got a plan. I've got a better plan. Behold thy God, O Israel, which what which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Did these two golden cap, these dumb idols that he made, is this what brought us out of Egypt? No, but guess what? Because the people's mind was wicked as hell also. They believed this stuff. They believed it when Jeroboam said, listen, behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. None of them stood up and said, wait a minute, hold on. But there are those that stood up, like Tobit was one of them. You understand? That lineage of Tobit and all that, mm -hmm, they are the ones. The tribe of Naphtali, you understand? Um, the Levites obviously was fired. He fired the Levites because the Levites, he knew the Levites don't sacrifice to golden calves to groves, to idols. They don't do that. That's why he fired them. Okay, come on. And he set the one in Bethel and the other put he in Dan. Read. And this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. So he put one in Bethel and one in, Be in Dan. And the people went to worship these golden, these, these golden calves that he put up. Okay, come on. And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. You see that thing? Which were not of the sons of Levi. Now, but I want to show you something, right? Remember these things that Jeroboam is thinking in his mind. He says, listen, if I, if I allow these people to go up, they are going to definitely not going to return. But Jeroboam had no faith. I'm going I'm to show you that. Watch this. Give me 1 Kings chapter 11. Okay. 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 28. You see, Jeroboam didn't have faith. Jeroboam, he did not believe nothing the Lord said. Watch this. 1 Kings 11 and verse 28. Watch this. First book of Kings chapter 11 verse 28. And the man, Jeroboam, was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. Go ahead. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahiah, the Shilonite, found him in the way. And he, and he had clad himself with a new garment. And they too were alone in the field. Mm -hmm. And Ahiah caught the new garment that was on him and rent it in 12 pieces. So now the prophet Ahiah is speaking to Jeroboam now. He's taking that garment that he was dressed up in. He cut it into 12 pieces. Okay, go ahead. And he said to Jeroboam, take the 10 pieces. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon. 
and will give 10 tribes to thee. You see that thing? So the prophet Ahia is telling, listen, the 10 tribes are going to be under you. But I'm going to what? I'm going to take 10 tribes out of Solomon, meaning out of his son's hand, out of Solomon's son, which is Rehoboam. And I'm going to give you 10 tribes. He's going to be left with two, Judah and Benjamin. And later on, because Jeroboam fired the priest, because he didn't believe that any nothing that the prophet Ahia said. He just ignored all of that. You understand? Because I, the prophet Ahia says, thus saith the Lord. This is not the, the words of Ahia. No, that's the words of the Lord. But he ignored all of that. So he decided, no, uh, before, because I don't want these people to go up there. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create two golden calves and the people for, so, so that they, they don't go to Jerusalem to worship. They are going to worship these two golden calves. So showing you, Jeroboam, he did not have faith. He was evil as hell. You understand? So much so that he built two golden calves. That was the problem with Jeroboam. He didn't have faith. That's why when he told the people, behold thy gods, O Israel, they believed him as well. Because they also did not have faith. That's the point. You start to see the decline. You understand? From the time of Noah, you start to see, a de remember, Noah then later on, our forefather Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and so forth. But as the generations go by, you start to see less and less stature in terms of faith, height, strength and so forth, belief and all of that, fortitude and all of that, courage and all, you start to see is declining. Generation after generation is not the same. And that's what you are noticing here. You understand? Watch this. Give me 2 Kings 2 verse 1. You know what? Go back to 1 Kings 12. I want to finish that. 2 Kings chapter, 1 Kings 12 verse 31. First book of Kings chapter 12 verse 31. Mm-hmm. And he made an house of high places and made priests of the laws of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. You see that thing? Which were not of the sons of Levi. That's who Jeroboam set up. Bums. He set up bums. Go ahead. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month. On the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he, offend, and he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high places which he had made. You see, we, which he set up himself, not the Lord, because the ones that were set up by the Lord was the Levites. He set up his own priests, which were not the sons of Levi, to sacrifice unto these idols. That's what he was doing. Wicked as hell. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 1. Watch this. Second book of Kings, chapter 2, verses 1. And it came to pass, when the Lord would take Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. So now this is when Elijah is going to be taken up by, by the Lord. The Lord is going to translate him into heaven. Now this is Elijah and Elisha. Now watch what happens now. Read verse 2 now. Come on. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord had sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. So now Elisha is telling Elijah, Listen, I'm going to go with you. Because Elijah was saying, Wait for me in Bethel. I need to take care of some business. You understand? Tarry here. He says, I pray thee, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. I'm going to Bethel. Wait for me here in Gilgal. But Elisha was saying, no, no, I'm going with you. Watch this, verse 3. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, yea, I know it. Hold your peace. So now these sons, the sons of the prophets, they are saying, listen, do you know that uh, your master will, is going to be taken away, is going to be translated? Now, on one hand, 
They believe the scriptures that some man was translated. They didn't like Enoch. Enoch didn't die. He was translated. The Lord took him. Okay. Give me that in Jude real quick. Okay. Jude. Give me Jude verse 14. The book of Jude verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh man. The book of Jude, verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, and prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. Okay, read that verse again. The book of Jude, verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. So now during the time of Enoch, Enoch was prophesying. He was teaching the people as well. Watch this. Give me Genesis chapter 5 now. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 24. The book of Genesis chapter 5 verses 24. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. You see that? Enoch walked with the God. He walked with the Lord he says, and he was not, because the Lord took him. He was translated into heaven, just like Elijah is going to be translated. Because our forefathers, they were very in tune with their history. They understood what happened in the past. So now, when they are, what they are saying to Elisha is, listen, your master is going to be taken. Because they understood history. They could relate to who? Enoch, because Enoch was translated. So now they are telling Elisha, your master is going to be translated just like Enoch was translated. Now read verse 2 Kings 2 verse 5 now. 2 Book of Kings 2 verse 5. And the Ray. sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. So now, remember now, this is the next destination. Elisha is saying, I'm going with Elijah. The sons of the prophet are saying the same thing to Elisha. You would think that because they are saying this, they have faith. You see that thing? Just because they are saying it, it don't mean they believe it. Watch this. Verse 7. And 50 men of the sons of prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. Read that again. Read it right. Read verse 7 again. Second book of Kings, chapter 2, verse 7. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. So now these, these sons of the prophets, they are watching because they knew that Elijah is going to be taken up. Okay, watch this. Come on, verse 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over a dry ground. So now they're crossing Jordan now. Watch this. Read verse 11 now. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So now Elijah has been translated there. The sons of the prophet are watching this. They are seeing it, okay? So now Elijah has been translated. He says, there appeared a chariot of fire. The sons of the prophet are looking at it. You understand? Elisha is there looking at it. Elijah, obviously. And horses of fire and parted them both asunder because Elijah was on one side. Eli Elisha was on the other, okay? It says, Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Watch this. Keep going. And Elisha, and Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no you, more. I, I need you to put some power in your reading. Come on, verse 12 again. Second book of Kings, chapter 2, verse 12. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. 
So now Eli Elisha saw his master is gone now. Okay, so he's taking the clothes of Eli Elijah and so forth. Watch this, go ahead. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. So now he's taking the cape. You see, when we go to camp, our garment is always be blowing by the wind. That's the cape. Okay, go ahead. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah and Elisha went over. So now he took the mantle, you understand? He did what Elijah did, and the, the Jordan was parted in two. He was able to go over. But now, watch this. The sons of the prophet are watching this. Read. And the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him. They said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Read verse 15 again. Watch this. Second book of Kings, chapter 2, verse 15. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. So now Elijah is gone. They are seeing Elisha is able to do what Elijah did. You understand? Because the Lord was, the spirit that was on Elijah jumped on Elisha because that's what Elisha asked for. He says, give me a double portion of your spirit before you go. Now the sons of the prophet are watching this. Okay. Now watch the next verse. Read verse 16 now. Second book of Kings, chapter 2, verse 16. And they said unto him, Behold, now there be with thy servants 50 strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Lest peradventure the Spirit of the Lord have taken him up and cast him upon some mountains or into some valley. And he said, He shall not send. So now the sons of the prophets are listen, take 50 men, go out there, look for, go and look for your master because. Maybe your master, the spirit of the Lord, took him away and dropped him on some mountain somewhere. So what changed here? Something changed, obviously. Because before Elijah left, they were saying, listen, do you know that your master going to go? He was saying, shut the hell up. Okay. Now, and Elisha, the spirit that was on Elijah jumped on Elisha. Now Elisha was able to do that. Verse 15, they saw Elisha part the Jordan. They bow themselves to the ground because they saw the spirit of Elijah is on Elisha now. Verse 16, what changed? Although they said it, but they didn't believe it. They said it, they saw it, they didn't believe nothing they were saying. Because verse 16, they say, no, send 50 men out there to look for your master. Maybe he was not taking, the spirit of the Lord didn't translate, the movie was not translated. The Lord dropped him somewhere on a mountain. Keep going. Verse 17, come on. And when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, send. They sent therefore 50 men and they saw three days, but found him not. So they were looking for Elijah for three days and they didn't find him. Go ahead. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto him, did I not say unto you, go not? You see what he's saying? Didn't I tell you don't, not, not to go? I told you don't go look for him. He's not there. He's gone. Because there is, how, why, how is it that for three days they went out looking for Elijah? But yet there was the ones that were saying, listen, you know that this, the, the, your master is going to disappear, is going to be translated. They are the same ones that went out there for three days looking for Elijah. And Elisha is telling them, when they come back, they say, we didn't find him. Say, but I told you this already. You're not going to find him. He's gone. So out of nowhere, they are showing what? They had no faith. Although they were saying it, they didn't believe it. Now, let's fast forward to today. Watch this. Give me the book of Jude. I'm going to show you something. Okay? Jude. Give me Jude. Because the apostle Jude, he spoke about this thing. 
Okay, watch this. Give me Jude and verse, verse 12. The book of Jude, verse 12. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds, they are without water. No, you Tell see that about, thing? It says clouds, they are without water. You ever see that cloud? You would think that it's going to rain, but it doesn't. You understand? You, you think, oh man, it's going to rain now. No, out of nowhere, the cloud just disappears. It says there's some of you in this truth. You look the part, but you don't believe nothing is written in this book. You don't believe it. Clouds are they without water. You look the part. You understand? You can speak a good game and so forth. You can dress nicely and all of that. But the Lord is saying you don't believe nothing is written. Go ahead. Carried about of winds. You see that thing? Doctrines. You are carried about with winds. Doctrines. Go ahead. Trees whose fruit were with, without fruit, twice no, dead. No, no. Fruits is as trees whose fruit withereth. Their fruit withers away. You understand? Their fruit withers away. What is the fruit? You know the fruit, the, the fruit of the spirit. That's what he's talking about. The fruit of the spirit. Okay, go ahead. Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. They are not rooted in this truth. It says, without fruit, they don't grow. There's no growth. There's no spiritual growth. The brother is still the same way he came in. They don't grow. Because they don't apply. So it says twice day. You was dead in the world before you came in. Now you're coming in. You don't apply. Guess what? You end up going back into the world. Or you are here but you don't believe. You are dead twice. That's what Jude is saying. Okay? Plucked up by the roots. Because guess what? You were never rooted in the first place. That's the same thing that we are reading in the book of Second King. They didn't believe nothing. You understand? They did not believe. That's what Jude is explaining here. Okay, go ahead. Verse 13. Raging waves of the sea. Foaming out of their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. You see that thing meaning judgment, damnation when the Lord returns. My point is, they, they what? They have no faith. That's what the Lord is teaching us here. You understand? They have no faith. We saw a great example of our forefather that had great faith. But the generations that came much later on, when you see in the wilderness and so forth, during the time of kings, and so, listen, guess what? What they, they the fact that they did not have faith, because that's the same generation that Moses was speaking to, that's the same generation today in 2021. The same generation that was on the slave ships. The same generation that was colonized is the same generation, okay? Watch this, give me, hmm, let me see, give me the book of Mark, okay? Give me Mark 6 verse one. The book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 1. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. Now, this is Christ now. He's going around teaching the people, waking the people up. He's traveling with, these, with the dream team. Go ahead. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence? Had this man these things. And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are, are wrought by his hands? Because they are seeing Christ is doing great works. You understand? He's doing mighty works. Read. Jump down to verse. Read verse 3. Keep going. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? The brother of James and Joseph 
end you of see what Judah. You see what they are asking? Is not this the carpenter? Because Christ was a carpenter. He says, is not this the car? He was a carpenter, just like his daddy. He says, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? Go ahead. The brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. They were offended. Because remember, they grew up with him. Now they are seeing him, listen, he is turning into a new man. They don't recognize him now. Now he's coming fully into the spirit. He says, uh, they, he says, and they were offended at him because of what he was teaching. Because what was he teaching? The law. And they were offended. Instead of repenting, they was offended. Watch this. Verse 4 now. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor. Stop right but there. A prophet is not without honor. So he's saying a prophet does have honor. That's what he's saying. He's saying a prophet is not without honor. Meaning a prophet does have honor. But watch this. Go ahead. But in his own country. Mm -hmm. And among his own kin. And in his and in his own house. So he's saying the prophet does have honor, but he does not going to find honor in his own country. Meaning where he grew up because the people don't take him serious. And among his own kin and in his own house. That's why you brothers and sisters, you be thinking that your family members are going to repent. They are not going to repent. The son of God, he was walking among them. You understand? They still did not repent. In fact, they was offended at him. So don't be surprised when you see your close family members so far that you grew up with and all. They don't care to want to apply what is written. Don't be surprised. You understand? Go ahead. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hand upon a few sick folk and healed them. So now he says he couldn't do no mighty work because the people did not believe. You understand? Go ahead. And he marveled because of the unbelief. You see what was the problem? He marveled. When he saw the lack of faith among them, he says he marveled at their unbelief. Go ahead. And he, mar and he marveled because of the unbelief. And he went round about the village's teaching. So now, what Christ was doing, he realized that, you know what? I don't have to sit there just be trying convincing these people that these hard-headed people, they don't believe nothing. I'm going to go to the other places and teach the gospel. You understand? I'm going to go somewhere else and teach this gospel. That's really what Christ is showing us. But the point I want to show you is that he says the son of God, they made the son of God marvel. They made the son of God to marvel because Christ saw everything. Remember Christ was in, give me that in Proverbs 8.22. Proverbs chapter 8. He says he marveled at their unbelief. Watch this. So it takes a Negro, a black ashy demon to make the son of God marvel. And I'm going to prove, I'm, I'm going to prove what I'm about to say. I'm saying, I'm going to prove what I'm saying right now. Watch this. Proverbs 8 verse 22. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 22. Come on. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. So now this is Christ speaking, the spirit of wisdom, which is Christ. He says, the Lord possessed me from the beginning, from the time before the world was made, before everything that we can see. He says he was with the Father from the beginning. Go ahead. I was set up from everlasting, from beginning, or ever the earth was. From the beginning, or ever the earth was. Come on, read it correctly. Verse 23 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 23. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. You see that thing? I Meaning before the earth was formed and all of that, he says he was there with the Father. He was there with the Most High. Go ahead. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. Mm -hmm. When there were no fountains abounding with water. 
You see what he's saying? He says he was brought forth. That's why he says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. He was there from the beginning. You understand? That from the very beginning, the Christ was there with his father. Go ahead. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Read. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest parts of the dust of the world. Come on. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. You see what he's saying? So Christ is taking us back to say, listen, before the things that you see, the sun, moon, and stars, the earth, and so forth, before all of this was there, he says, I was there with the Father. Meaning what? He saw, listen, the, the, the most High, he showed Christ everything that he made. How it is made and all of that. Because he used Christ to create everything. So Christ, he created everything that you see. You understand? He formed Adam too. From the dust of the ground. So he saw, listen, the things that Christ saw. The things that he knows. And all of that. But guess what? When he saw the Negro, he was marveled. Could you imagine that? I mean, you really have to think about that. He, but he saw the Negro. He said, yeah, ne? I'm like a James. I'm telling you, when he saw the Negro, he said, mm -mm. yeah. But that's what we're seeing today. Okay, just switch on the new YouTube, you'll see the Negro. The Negro. <laughs> There's nothing that the Negro is. The Negro. The Negro a heavy experiment, yeah. Okay. The Negro is a heavy failed experiment of the white man. Watch this. Give me Matthew 17, verse 14. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, they came to him, a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is, for he is lunatic and so vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. So now this man is a son that is possessed with a demon. You understand? He's crazy. Go ahead. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Read. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. So now Christ is telling the disciples, listen, what is wrong with you? You have no faith. He says, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. Bring him here then. How, many, how long am I going to walk with you until you get what I'm saying? You understand what is coming out. You understand what I'm teaching you. How long must I be walking among you? That's what Christ is telling the disciples. What was the problem? Lack of faith. You understand? Read. And remember, these men, they walked with Christ. They walked with, for three years, they was walking with Christ. You understand? Come on. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and it departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. So now, Christ rebuked the devil. You understand? Because, guess what? He was, he, he was at that level where, he listen, he was heavy in the spirit. He rebuked the devil out of that boy, and he left. Watch this. Go ahead. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could, why could not we cast him out? You see that thing? Now they are moving, they are taking him separate to say, listen, why couldn't we, why were we not able to do this? Okay, watch, watch what Christ says. Read. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he shall say unto the mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, 
and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So now is, I need you to put some power in your reading. Come on. Remember, brothers, this, this, these, these are very difficult to edit when now you have to be imaging and chopping and putting. No, no, no. Come on. Stay in the spirit. Read that verse again. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So now he's telling them, listen, because of your unbelief, that's the reason why you was able to cast this demon out of this boy. Because you don't believe, you have no faith. Remember, he's repeating the same thing that he's just repeated in verse 17. Verse 17 says, oh, faithless and perverse generation. Verse 20 says, because of your unbelief, they did not believe, they didn't have faith. You understand? So now he's telling them, listen, if, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. What is he telling them? He's telling them, listen, this, the mountain is the problem. The mountain represents the, the problem that a brother or a sister has, whether whatever, whether, whether they come in for counsel and all of that, that's the mountain, that's the problem. He said, listen, if you have faith, you're gonna be able to help them through this. They will overcome. Not just for them, but for yourself as well. That's what he's teaching them. So guess what? The reason why you see like some sins just be repeating themselves over and over is because of lack of faith. Excuse me. Let me say that again. The reason why a lot of the times you see like this, there's a stubborn sin. It just keeps coming up over and over is because that's a sign that there's a lack of faith. There's no faith. So now you have to pray for the Lord to increase your faith. You understand? Because the more you apply, it shows that you have faith because you want to get yourself right. Then you keep doing it consistently. That's an example of faith right there. The more you do it, your spirit gets used to it. That's what your spirit, that's how your spirit is going to move going forward. You keep repeating it over and over, doing the, the correct way according to the scriptures. Guess what? That's how you become that new man. That's how you become that new woman. Faith. By your works. That's the point. Faith by your works. That's the point right there. You understand? Watch this. Hmm. Give me. Hmm, I don't think I should go there. You know what? Go back to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 verse 7. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7. Come on. You know, let's start with 6. We're going to read 6 and 7 together. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Read. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he commanded the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. You see that thing? So Noah became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. The faith that Noah showed, give me that in James 2.18 again. James 2 verse 18. Because the faith that Noah had was, was shown by his works. The works that he did, you understand? He believed... What the Lord told him, so I'm going to destroy the earth with water. And there was never rain upon the earth. Noah did it regardless. He did what, regardless whether he saw it before or not. But he did it because he had faith. Okay? James 2, verse 18. Read that. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 18. A man... The book of James, chapter 2, verse 18. Yea, a man may say, that was faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You see that thing? That's what our forefather Noah did. 
He showed his faith by his works when he built the ark to prepare for the flood that was coming. That what? For 100 years, he was just building and teaching. And then the 600th year, guess what happened? The flood came. And he went into the ark with his family and he survived it. Because of faith. You understand? So we must, this is the, these are, these, this chapter right here, you feel like you're lacking in your faith, you must read Hebrews 11. You understand? You're going to be able to build your faith up because you must have faith. Your faith is going to be shown by your works. You see the generations of old, how they handle things. You understand? So I'm going to end the class right here. Okay, let's break bread in the, in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of Israel. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This to ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for that. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. All praises.